Welcome back to my channel, Reclaiming Jen, where we are reclaiming teaching. Here's a look into what my online classes look like. So as you can see on my other camera view, I have the sound chart. It helps the student think about the first sound of each of the pictures that are on there. And then we come over and use that knowledge to find the mystery words. So the mystery word for this one is, do you know what the mystery word is? Use the first sound of each picture and blend them together. K -a -n, k -an, k -an, can. How about the next one? The first sound of each picture and blend them together. At, had, had. Hmm, this one has a heart over the picture. Can you figure out what the mystery word is? As, as. What is the mystery word? Why is that heart there? The mystery word is as, as. And there is a heart over the z because we have to remember that the z sound is represented with an s it's not something we expect from the letter s so we have to remember it by heart words like this are called heart words and instead of memorizing how the word is spelled we can decode the word by using our phonics knowledge a ah, and we only have to remember the z part the z part is represented with the letter s in this word so instead of memorizing the whole word, we can decode part of the word and only remember part of the word. How about the next one? Am, am, am. <laughs> if you live where I do live, we say am. But my friend who lives out west, she says am. Let's try another one. Er, uh, mm. Run. Good. Now, what if I told you that there's another sound chart for long vowels? Can you find this icon? Right here. Uh, cook. So this picture represents the uh sound. What is this word? P uh. Put, put. It's put. Put is the mystery word. Now, there are three sounds in the word put, and there's that heart again. Why is that heart there? Because we hear uh, but it's spelled with a U. P uh, t. And we can stamp a heart over top of that U because the student can use their phonics knowledge to decode P and T. But they have to remember by heart that the U uh sound in put is represented with a U in this word. It's not put, it's put. So if it was the word put, then we would not need the heart here but we could have the heart over the two T's because we may not expect that there are two T's in the word put instead of one. All right, here's a tricky one. It's got a heart on it. Can you find the mystery words on this page? Ed, said, said. The mystery word is said. Why is that heart there? The heart is there because the S sound is represented by the grapheme AI. Sed, sed, said. There it is. Last one. No hearts in this one. We can use our phonics knowledge to decode this word t n t n t 
10. The mystery word is 10. There are three sounds and three letters in this word. 10. Most of us have probably heard of a word wall. Well, look out. Teachers are going to be revolutionizing their word walls, their classrooms with sound walls. This brings me back to my days in linguistics classes in university. This sound wall categorizes the sounds of English into groups like stops, nasals, fricatives, affricates, glides, liquids, ex and extras. And look at this vowel valley. This vowel valley is so cool. It's organized in a fashion that shows the mouth getting bigger and then smaller again as we go through the vowel sounds in English. Check this out. E, I, A, E, A, I, A, 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 O, A, U, U. Pretty cool. I love this. Another activity I did today was lookalike words. So the student had to look at this picture here and she had to choose the correct word that goes with it. She did a very good job with this. She was able to easily find that sad is the correct word. Cub, sob, jet, fix. This activity is awesome and free. The student has to decode how many sounds are in the word frog. Er, Og, and we often have them tap it out. Er, og, or er, og, four sounds. So we can reveal that they are correct, and we can move the markers into each box for each sound. Er, og, and then they have the opportunity to write the word. So we tapped it. Then we mapped it. This is called orthographic mapping. And each sound gets its own box. Fur, ah, g. How about this one? How many sounds are in the word clock? K, u, ah, k. Four sounds. Now you might be thinking five letters but we want to focus on the sounds. K, o, a, k. There are four sounds. There are the four boxes. K, o, a, k. Okay, and now when we write this, how are we going to fit two letters in one box. K, U, A, K. The K phoneme is represented by the grapheme CK. Another activity I like to use with this student is to sort pictures according to their short vowel sounds. Umbrella, A, uh, Egg. And so then once you submit the answers, you uh, click it and it will show you whether you got all the answers correct. One of my favorite websites for gamifying my classes is called wordwall.net. On wordwall.net, you can find free games that align with what you're teaching your students. And everybody knows that gamifying is a great way to um, enhance your lessons and increase student engagement. So in this activity, the student had to find the words that rhyme with hat. Now this was showing her that all of the words that rhyme with hat have A-T in common. Now you may think that this is something uh, that comes easily, but it was, the activity was easy for her. But to answer my question about what these words all have in common, what is the same, was actually quite difficult for her. So then the next activity we did was to find the picture 
that rhymes with box. So there are no words. It's all sound and phonological awareness, which is a foundation for reading. So she had defined the word that rhymed with box just by looking at the pictures and thinking of the phonemes. And so at the beginning, she needed a little extra help, but by the end of it, she knew how to do it. Uh, box and fox. So if you have concerns about your child's reading, um, it's a good idea to see how good they are at choosing rhymes. And if rhyming activities are challenging for them, um, they may be lacking in their foundations for phonological awareness. Hey parents, if you're interested in knowing more about my online classes, please email me at reclaimingteaching at gmail.com and check out the description for free resources to help your child read.